60 years ago, 14,000 unaccompanied children were smuggled out of Cuba and into the United States because their parents feared for their safety. Among other things, they feared the Castro regime would tear their families apart as it moved toward totalitarianism. Now, Carlos Alamilla was one of those kids who left Cuba as part of Operation Pedro Pan. Carlos was 11 years old when he arrived in this country, and he joins us now. Thank you for coming. Thank you for Great the invite. I appreciate that, it. That was a long, long time ago. A long time ago, yes. And what goes through your mind when you're seeing what's playing out now with these children and the ones that were separated from their families? Well, you know, it's, I feel a tremendous empathy, you know, for these kids, you know, because of all the abuse and suffering that they're, they're going through. We were both separated, but with different times and different conditions. We knew that we were going to be separated with the blessings of our parents. So this is not that uh, we're being, you know, revicted from our homes or rejected by our parents. We came because of political reasons and always with the thought of reuniting with our parents. You were 11 years old. Tell me what came, what brought your family to that decision? Well, first of all, they, they had closed all, all, all our schools. I went to La Salle, you know, in Havana, and, and, and they closed all, all our schools. There was a persecution of, of religion, persecution that, you, you know, you had to be a part of the whole communist and Fidel system, you know. And we had to, and, and we had to, the pioneers of the, revolu of the revolution were just starting then. And we wanted, we you had to participate. Yeah. If, you, if you didn't participate, then, you know, you were not part of the government agenda. You were ostracized, absolutely. And right, you were ostracized and humiliated, you know, your parents, and and that's the reason, you know, that, that we came, you know, became because because of political reasons, basically, and uh, and thank God, you know, that I was, that they made that decision. And I understand you made the newspaper when you arrived. Tell us about that. Yeah, because what happened was I, I came and we came to orphanage camps. We had three orphanage camps, so we had four here in Miami, and I went to three of them, and then we were sent, they became so full, that we were sent to foster homes. And that's you on a bicycle? Explain that picture. <laughs> yeah. You look pretty yeah, happy. Yeah, you know, we were sent to foster homes, and I happened to be sent to a foster home in Chicago and I, with, a, an, with an American family. That's when we had cultural shock, because we, you know, in, in language shock, because I had no, no knowledge of English. You know, we had no knowledge, you know, of, of the American culture. And you know the trauma uh, involved with a, a, a small child being separated from their families. How, how do you feel these children are being affected? No, these children are going to have a trauma for the rest of their lives. First of all, you know, we had traumas because we were separated, but we knew about the separation. But these children have no knowledge that they were going to be separated uh, right at the border. So, you know, by, by a law enforcement officer and you were separated, and that automatically, you know, just causes a trauma. You know, separating and see your mother being separated by somebody who's a law enforcement officer. You know, that, that, they'll, you'll never forget that. And you a know. lot of these children are very young. Too they're young very to young. I mean, they're, some of them are four, five, six years old. You know, obviously they're going to cry. Obviously they're going to see, when am I going to see my mother again? When am I going to see my parents again? They, well, the same thing would happen with me, but in a different setting. Okay, this, this, is, this is really a abuse, you know, the separation of families. One thing that I've always wondered, and we can show those images again of Operation Pedro Pan, there are so many of you that came during that time who became so successful. I mean, you've had a successful career as a marketing executive, author and mentor, people like former Senator Mel Martinez, Eduardo Padron, the president yeah. of Miami-Dade Community College, Miguel Bezos, the, the father of Jeff Bezos, and the list goes on and on. Do you ever wonder, was that experience part of what brought success to those folks? Well, you know, that? you became a survivalist. That's it, Re really early in life. You know, when you're 13, 14, I started to work. I was selling the Chicago Tribune newspaper, and, you know, I was making $6 a week. I thought I was, you know, you know, a millionaire. But you had to do it because I didn't have a father. I grew up without a father. My father never made it out of Cuba. And so it was just me and my mother. So, you, you, you know, you, you became a survivor. And I think by doing that and also focusing on, on education, because that was really the only way to get out of the, uh, out of the poverty, you know, that we lived in. Um, and to look at life from a positive point of view and grow up in this society 
and and this is the you know this is a system that gives you more opportunities you know that any other system and a lot of gratitude well no, obviously behind. you know I will always be grateful you know uh, you know for the opportunities that were given to me you know in education work etc cetera, etc cetera. Carlos thank you for joining us and sharing your story we appreciate it thank uh, you for having me Carlos thank you very much Carlos